Steamboat Springs in Northwest Colorado is like other popular mountain resort communities in the state. There's a world-class ski resort, hot springs, and a national forest to explore. That's exactly why Sanaya Sturm, her husband, and young son and daughter moved here. We're big campers, so we'll, we'll go out and we kind of get out into the national forest and fishermen, big skiers, we do it all. But moving to an outdoor paradise like Steamboat comes with a price. When Sanaya and her family relocated here from Denver in 2020, they had to downsize from the 3,600 square foot house they owned to a rental that's much less than half that size. They pay over $3,300 each month for one side of a duplex home, plus an additional $150 for a storage unit. The transition was hard. The three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath home feels small for their family of four. Sanaya's husband, who works from home, turned the living room into his office. If Sanaya or the kids are at home during the week, they have to tiptoe around. Or if he's on a call, they can't watch TV. But Sanaya found a silver lining. If it's the summer, I will take my fishing rod and pack a lunch and just head out for the woods and see what the next adventure is, which is actually has been super fun. Sanaya was born in Colorado and spent part of her childhood living in India, where her parents are from. After college, she lived in other mountain resort communities, including Jackson, Wyoming. So she knew finding housing would be challenging. However, she and her husband are fiscally responsible. They don't have any debt and save the money from selling their Denver home. But so far, it's not been enough. I have a down payment to put on a house that unfortunately I think I've been priced out now. They really want to buy a single family home in the city. But between the low inventory, high prices, and buyer competition, it's been really hard. Probably shouldn't admit this, but even in the middle of the night, I wake up stressed out all the time. Check Zillow at 2 in the morning like something's going to magically pop up. She's put in over a dozen offers on homes over the past two years, often over the asking price, but inevitably gets outbid by cash offers or the owners convert the home to a short-term rental. Steamboat has become home, but I would say I don't think I'm really kind of laying down roots yet mentally. It starts to feel hopeless after a while. She hasn't been able to lay down roots because, like many of Colorado's mountain resort communities, Steamboat has a workforce housing crisis. But this city has something most others don't, a lot of land to build on. I'm Stephanie Daniel, and this is The Colorado Dream, Housing Wanted, from KUNC News. From restaurant servers to police officers to local doctors, it's hard for people at nearly every income level to find housing in mountain resort communities. This series investigates the housing challenges facing residents and perhaps, most importantly, what community leaders are doing or not to find solutions. This is episode three, Yampa Valley Curse. There's a story of the Yampa Valley Curse where you come here and, and you never leave. Jason Peasley is the executive director of the Yampa Valley Housing Authority. That appears to be sort of fading away to some degree because you get here and you can't put in roots. You can't make it work because of the unaffordability of housing, the lack of supply, the sort of chronic uncertainty that people live with. That's what Sanaya was saying. She can't put down roots here because it's been so hard to find a home. And that same problem is affecting thousands of people. Last year, a housing authority study found Route County needed 1,400 housing units just to house the current full-time workforce. Steamboat Springs is the biggest city in Route County, with a population of over 13,000. It's nestled between mountains in the Yampa Valley, a wide area of green fields and ranches with the Yampa River running through it. The grasslands still exist thanks to the area's agricultural roots that continue today. The weekly farmer's market is filled with local produce, and the upscale restaurants on Main Street serve burgers with beef raised in the valley. So maybe it's fitting that a former ranch, Brown Ranch, is a big part of the city's solution to the housing crisis. Or at least, that's the hope. Jason, his dog Brutus, and I hop in his truck and head west on Highway 40 to Brown Ranch. Given the size of the development relative to the population 
and its mission to provide affordable housing to the local workforce. Jason says Brown Ranch is probably a first of its kind project in the U.S. Where we can essentially develop all the housing that our community needs for the next couple of decades. Let me get out here and show you a little bit. We're at Brown Ranch, over 500 acres of undeveloped land just outside the Steamboat City limits. So it's primarily sort of rolling hillsides with a few bluffs. We have a seasonal creek, as we mentioned, that runs through the property, sort of creates like the backbone of the, of the ranch. There are sweeping views of the Yampa Valley, the ski area, and landmarks like Elk Mountain, a.k.a. the Sleeping Giant. This is the future site of a couple thousand long-term affordable housing units. They will be reserved for the local workforce, who can't compete in Steamboat's expensive housing market. During the first half of 2023, the average single-family home price was nearly $1.8 million. The average condo or townhouse cost over a million. Land is at a premium in the high country. A lot of mountain resort communities don't have the luxury of a huge plot of land to build on, like Brown Ranch. Looking around the hundreds of acres of open grasslands, I can sense the possibilities this land has to offer, a potential savior to the workforce housing crisis. But I also feel the history of this place. The first inhabitants were the indigenous Ute tribes. The federal government forcibly removed and relocated them to reservations in southern Colorado and Utah after the Battle of Mill Creek in 1879. Two decades later, Amos R. Brown bought hundreds of acres here, a year after he moved to Steamboat. He turned the land into a farm that produced oats, wheat, and raised horses. In the 1980s, the Browns quit farming and moved into town. In 2021, something very fortunate happened. An anonymous donor bought the property and gifted it to the Yampa Valley Housing Authority. No charge, the donor said, just use it to build long-term affordable housing. The whole project is going to be serving our local workforce or people who've retired from our local workforce, essentially every AMI level that needs support. AMI stands for Area Median Income, which estimates the median family income for an area. The federal government uses it to define ranges from very low to middle income households. Under these guidelines, Brown Ranch will provide housing options for a variety of workers like a cook or medical assistant who makes $40,000 a year, or an IT manager that's making over $140,000. The plan is that rent and for sale prices won't exceed 30% of a person or family's income. Housing advocates know that when there's a shortage of places to live, overcrowding happens. Last year's housing study also found that more than 20% of Route County homes have multiple families living together. Experts say this can have detrimental effects, like lack of sleep, bad hygiene practices, and an increased risk of infectious diseases that can lead to poor physical and mental health. People of color experience the highest rates of overcrowding, which according to a national think tank, mirrors deep racial disparities in housing instability and people experiencing homelessness. Health equity is one of the roots of the Brown Ranch project and informs its design. Jason says they are also working with community partners to ensure access to a healthy life. That begins with housing, but it extends to, you know, having access to, you know, childcare, having access to open space in parks, having access to fresh healthy foods, all of that. The health equity plan also supports housing mobility for the different stages of life. For example, a single person renting an apartment in Brown Ranch will be able to buy a home in the development if they decide to start a family, or a retiree can downsize to a condo. Brown Ranch will be developed into four compact, walkable neighborhoods with affordable single-family homes, townhomes, condos, and apartments to rent or own. Each will have a commercial core, transit center, and lots of green space. We're aligning with our local climate action plan to make sure that we're hitting those marks for energy efficiency, water conservation. And a big tool that we can utilize there is concentrating open space and parks into sort of a larger integrated system. The Yampa Valley Housing Authority hopes to break ground next year. The project will be built in phases, and the first neighborhood should be completed in three to four years.
The goal is to build close to 2,300 units by 2040. Brown Ranch is in unincorporated Route County, so before construction can begin, much of the land will need to be annexed into the city. This will allow for more dense housing and access to infrastructure, like roads, sewer, and water. Remember Sanaya Sturm? She's the nurse manager for the Cancer Center and Breast Care Programs at UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center. She also hires people. And during the interview process, she lets people know about Steamboat's housing issues. How early in the interview process do you have this conversation about housing? I usually have it pretty early. And you don't want to scare people off. You know, housing is just such a big thing that we always try to be very thoughtful and informative for people when we hire, and the same was done for me. Sanaya had the talk with Ashton Wheeler, a traveling breast mammographer from Kansas. Ashton started working in the Breast Care Center in August of 2022 on a three-month contract. She was like, even before we, like, you start your process of with your travel contract, like, look for housing. When Ashton first moved to Steamboat, she stayed in a tiny condo that wasn't even 300 square feet. This lady had her condo rented out, but it was just like the master bedroom with the bathroom. And then in the linen closet was a microwave and air fryer and a mini fridge. At first, she was living by herself. Then her fiancé and his younger brother joined her. So there was at one time three people in that one room. It was super, yeah, super cramped and tight. They only stayed for three months and then moved into a hotel suite with a kitchenette. Still, it was a cramped space for three people and her dog, Shadow. Ashton loved working at Yampa Valley Medical Center and wanted to stay on full time. But the housing situation was stressful. Sanaya was a very big advocate because I was like, if I am going to go full time, I want to know I have a sense of security for housing for right now. Sanaya, Ashton's boss, wanted her to stay on too. So Sanaya went to HR to brainstorm ideas. Together, they found Ashton a unit in one of Yampa Valley Medical Center's temporary housing buildings that she could rent for 10 months. It's a one-bedroom apartment with a loft that can double as another room. Um, I can breathe. That's really the biggest part. It's like you have your own sense of basically privacy, too. So it's nice having even a living room and being able to have guests over now. Ashton became a full-time employee in March. She still needs to find a permanent place to live. Coming up, we get more details about Yampa Valley Medical Center's housing initiatives. Then we learn how the local housing authority is turning to the community to help create Brown Ranch. We wanted to capture that information so that we really understood the struggles that they were experiencing. That's after the break. The Colorado Dream Housing Wanted is supported by Berg Hill Greenleaf Rushidi, a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services to businesses and individuals throughout the Rocky Mountain region and beyond. BHGR is a company committed to Coloradans and initiatives that support a quality business environment with emphasis in diversity, equity, and inclusivity, workforce development, transportation access, and affordable housing. More at bhgrlaw.com. What does it mean to be in the know? Well, if you're living in Northern Colorado, just listen to In the Know Co. to discover more about what makes our community unique. I'm your host, Erin O'Toole. Together, we'll dig into important events, cultural identity, and stories from the people who live here. Join us for In the Know Co. Tuesday through Friday during Morning Edition on 91.5 KUNC. Or listen and subscribe at our website, KUNC.org, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Stephanie Daniel, and this is the Colorado Dream Housing Wanted from KUNC News. UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center is one of the largest employers in Steamboat, with over 600 staff members. One of them is the president, Sonia Fiddler. She's worked here for 17 years, starting off as the senior recruiter. I think every industry in our community have been committed to, we all need to resolve housing and specifically for our workforce. The medical center takes pride in its quality health care, Sonia says. 
but she worries that the housing crisis could get so bad that they won't have the staff to provide critical services. For example, a lack of neonatal nurse practitioners could impact the special care nursery. If we didn't have that special care nursery, what that would mean is having to fly out that baby and that family out to Denver, likely, or another metropolitan area to receive that level of care. Workforce housing has been a priority for several years, she says, and it includes two different strategies to recruit and retain employees. Transitional housing, like where Ashton lives, helps hire people. And then more permanent housing that should help keep staff in the community. This includes the medical center's first long-term rental units. It will make an impact for a number of our, our staff, and it will be meaningful. Two local developers building a 42-unit complex were keenly aware of the hospital's housing crisis. So in May, they asked if Yampa Valley Medical Center wanted to buy some units. Sonia says they ended up buying the entire project, which is about a mile south of the hospital. So we were like, wow, well, this is kind of almost exactly what we've been trying to accomplish with our long-term lease strategy. Full-time staff are eligible to apply for the housing and will be chosen via lottery. Rent amounts will be based on a person's salary and won't exceed 30% of their monthly pay. Yampa Valley Medical Center doesn't plan to charge market rate for these units. We are subsidizing the housing on behalf of our, our staff to make it affordable and ideally hope that they can then save in order to find some type of ownership. And with the Brown Ranch development on the horizon, Medical Center staff might be in a great position to buy a place there in the future. Many of them have already said to me, I call Steamboat my home and I call YVMC my family. And now I have hope that I can continue to do that. The apartments are scheduled to open by the end of 2024. So these communities are trying very hard to hold on to the businesses that exist there, to keep the community as a community. Kimball Krangle is one of the people involved in actually building new workforce housing in the high country. She's the Colorado market president for Gorman and Company a for-profit developer that delivers housing solutions for low- and middle-income families and individuals. And if you don't have folks that live locally, your businesses at some point are going to stop being businesses in that community as well. Gorman and Company's first job in the high country was in 2014 in the town of Vail. Since then, they have completed nine workforce housing projects in Route, Summit, and Eagle counties. Right now, there are seven projects in various stages of development in these local communities. One of Kimball's current projects is in the town of Hayden, about 25 miles west of Steamboat. It was funded by the state's Transformational Affordable Housing Grant Program, created in 2022. Hayden and Gorman and Company were awarded over $8 million last May to build 129 deed-restricted rental units serving middle-income households. They hope to secure funding for an additional 50 units for low-income renters. It's been really cool as a practitioner in affordable housing to see more communities saying we want housing affordability diversity. That was not the tune that we were hearing 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Phase one's going to be this neighborhood over here, which is uh, neighborhood A. It's about 500 units. Back at Brown Ranch, Yampa Valley Housing Authority Executive Director Jason Peasley tells me more about the development. We'll have a new fire station, we'll have a new park right here. That's ideally where the grocery store will go as well. The Yampa Valley Housing Authority is committed to working with the community while designing Brown Ranch. So it connected with residents, community and government groups, nonprofits, and businesses. This included talking with the city's sizable Hispanic and Latino population to ensure their voices were heard. It was really important to reach out to them in a way that was very comfortable because traditionally the barrier for them participating has been pretty high. Jason enlisted Latinx Alliance, a local volunteer-led nonprofit, to facilitate meetings with the Spanish-speaking community. And I think coming from people who can directly talk to that group, in their own language, which is in Spanish, it really makes a difference. That's UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center employee and medical interpreter Cecilia Escobar Ceballos. She's a member of the Latinx Alliance. She's also one of two Latinos serving on the Brown Ranch Steering Committee, 
and is part of its health equity team. She met with the Latino community to learn more about their needs. And most of the needs had to do with health equity, which is to having green spaces, you know, transportation, access to health services, shopping, you know, for food and all of that. So all of that has to do with health equity. Cecilia was surprised by the response. They sent out a survey and hosted seven meetings that reached over 300 people. Many of them voiced similar concerns and ideas. They wanted a rec center where kids could play year-round, especially during the long winter months, and an underpass so people living in the mobile home park across Highway 40 could safely access bus stops at Brown Ranch. They also want to become homeowners. Their dream is to have a home because it shows them that they have succeeded. Jason and the Yampa Valley Housing Authority took their input to heart. The underpass was already part of the plan, but they are including an indoor sports facility with two outdoor playing fields made of artificial turf. And about 60% of the Brown Ranch inventory will be for sale units. Brown Ranch is a hot topic in Steamboat, and a lot of people have been voicing their opinions. In fact, over 3,300 community members participated in more than 220 meetings. I've been in Steamboat for about four and a half years, five winters, we count it up here. That's Johnny Garments. He works for a fine beverage distribution company and is on the board of Steamboat's Young Professionals Network, or YPN. The group disseminated a housing survey to its members, and over 250 of them completed it, including Johnny. If we don't give our voice, then how are we supposed to be noticed? So definitely took the survey and it was good. The results showed about two thirds of participants worry the lack of housing will force them to leave the city. Some of the comments respondents left were positive. One said, Brown Ranch is vital to the future of our community. Others were critical, including concerns about negative impacts on quality of life and an increase in traffic that is, quote, already a problem. It's a beautiful, sunny summer day. The birds are chirping, and Johnny is sitting at a picnic table in a gazebo at the base of House and Hill Ski Area. He's lived in five different places during his time in Steamboat. This past winter, four of his friends left because of the housing crisis. I mean, it's concerning, you know. It is obviously uneasy, but... You know, it kind of comes with the territory also. You know, you live in paradise. You kind of have to expect that everyone else wants to live in paradise as well. The YPN survey results also found nearly two-thirds of respondents spent more than a third of their income on housing. We are already paying more in rent. We are afraid that it's going to be more uh, not affordable. And essentially, the more time it leads on, the less likely it is going to work. But Johnny seems cautiously optimistic. He loves the idea of Brown Ranch and says it could provide an amazing opportunity. He's looking forward to buying a house in four years. And hopefully, his friends will become homeowners too. Give them opportunity to possibly own property and stay here for the long term and be vital members of this community. I want to circle back to Sanaya Stern the nurse manager at UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center. Brown Ranch probably won't work for her. The first units won't be completed for years, and she wants a home now. Plus, Sanaya thinks her family's household income might be too high for an income-restricted housing development. We probably are the people who are stuck in the middle where we may not qualify, and so we will still probably be in this boat. Sanaya isn't sure what her family's future looks like, but hopes to stay and make Steamboat their permanent home. Brown Ranch is one step closer to becoming a reality. This week, the city council approved the annexation in a narrow 4-3 to three vote, but residents can still challenge that. They have 30 days to collect enough signatures to bring it to a citywide vote. Even though the land was donated, infrastructure and construction would cost about a billion to a billion and a half dollars over the next two decades. Yampa Valley Housing Authority plans to use public and private partnerships and government grants to fund the project. Additional funding could come from the city's short-term rental tax, a measure on the November ballot 
will ask voters to allocate 75% of the rental tax revenue to Brown Ranch. On the next episode of the Colorado Dream Housing Wanted, we dig into Steamboat Springs' short-term rental tax with my KUNC colleague, investigative reporter Scott Franz. He talks with residents who fall on both sides of this contentious issue. We certainly heard from community members who felt like having a short-term rental in their neighborhood or next door was detrimental to their quality of life. That's next time on The Colorado Dream. The Colorado Dream Housing Wanted is a production from KUNC News. It was written and reported by me, Stephanie Daniel. Editing by Sean Corcoran. The theme song was composed by Jason Patton. Michelle Rado sound designed and mixed the episode. Jennifer Coombs is the digital editor. Special thanks to Ashley Jeffcoat, Ray Solomon, Scott Franz, Robin Vincent, Robert Leisure, and Mike Arnold. Tammy Turwelp is KUNC's president and CEO. To learn more about Brown Ranch and UC Health Yampa Valley Medical Center's housing initiatives and see photos of the people included in this episode and other extras, go to KUNC.org slash Colorado Dream or check out the show notes for a link.